So Fedora 40 is out, and I wanted to do a What's New video, not just on Fedora, but desktop Linux in general. And I like to do this with Fedora because Fedora releases every six months, and the included packages always have very recent versions. In addition to that, with Fedora, you get an unaltered vanilla GNOME experience. In fact, I think Fedora gets a lot of hate for that. You would frequently hear that Fedora is boring because, um, because the packages, they really don't customize the desktop environment much. You wouldn't see a custom theme like Ubuntu does, a font, custom applications that are specifically crafted for the distributions, like Ubuntu does with their software center, for example. Fedora would include GNOME software. They would actually contribute to the development of the GNOME desktop environment rather than build their own software to include in the distribution. In my opinion, saying that that is boring and disliking Fedora for that reason is a very big misunderstanding about where the value in a Linux distribution is. There's a lot of open source software out there, a lot of good software. There are many options about how to configure a distribution. And the biggest value of a distro is integration testing and shipping a polished operating system with tested, battle-tested open source components so that they work together well and the entire thing looks polished. That's extremely hard. And I think Fedora is one of the best, most well-integrated and polished distributions in the Linux world right now, without a doubt. But for that reason, first of all, I really like Fedora as an operating system, and I really like checking out the new releases because I can focus not on customizations done by the team that is assembling the distro, but I can focus on the new features in GNOME, the Linux kernel, the applications, the new versions that are included in the GNU2 chain. And that's what this video is going to be about. And I'll start with the newest GNOME, of course, which is GNOME 46, that's included with Fedora 40. Let's start with the updates to the Files app, Nautilus. We have a new global search. It seems to work very well. It searches file name and metadata, as well as file contents, and it's very fast. Switching between list and grid views was unnecessarily waggy previously, now, it's much more responsive, it happens almost instantly, and it's overall a better experience. The file operations progress is now moved to the sidebar at the bottom. There's a new dynamic progress section. When you execute file operations, it appears and you can click on it to see more details about the progress of file operations. There are small updates to the settings app in terms of user interface and performance. The appearance panel will now load faster than before, and the previews of the wallpapers should be sharper. The new system panel groups region and language, date and time, remote desktop and about into one settings panel. There are also more minor updates across multiple applications. Let's talk about some of them. The software app shows a verified batch now next to trusted applications. Maps now supports dark mode and you should see improvements in public transport routing, although I couldn't verify those. The Quox app now includes a quick timers function which allows you to use these timer presets to start a timer quickly. Desktop notifications are now more organized. They are grouped by application and they are expandable so that they show fewer details at first. It is a welcome change and more up to date with industry standards for how notifications are handled in terms of user experience. And we're used to that already on our Android and iOS phones. There is a new keyboard shortcut, super control and number Previously, super and number would start an application based on the number left to right. For example, super two would start the second application pinned to your dock. Now, super control number would open a new window of the appropriate application. There's a remote login option included in GNOME settings. It works with RDP out of the box. As I demonstrate here, if I enable remote login in my GNOME settings, I then use my other computer with an RDP client, I just enter the host name, the username and password, which is in my GNOME settings. Keep in mind that the default password in the settings will not be the default password for your user. It auto-generates a strong password there, so take a look at it. And I can just log in to the GNOME desktop with a new session. It worked flawlessly without any hiccups. There's also experimental support for variable refresh rate monitors. If you have such a monitor, it can be enabled like any GNOME experimental feature through the command line. I will include the command in the video description below and you see it on the screen right now. After you execute the G settings setter, you can just go into settings and you should have the new option for variable refresh rate. Fedora 40 ships with Linux kernel 6.8 and as with any kernel release, there are so many small changes, preparations for future hardware driver updates, many things. 
Now, the big ones I think you might care about are the Intel XE DRM driver, of course, display driver for Intel, the newer Intel integrated graphics. Of course, if you have an Intel CPU with Intel XE graphics, this will be a big one for you. You're getting a brand new display driver. Additionally, if you are an Intel user with a Meteor Lake CPU, there have been uh, adjustments have been made to the Intel PS8 CPU frequency so that your CPU would be able to hit its advertised boost speed now. In previous kernel versions, that apparently couldn't happen and you were short with about 100 MHz. AMD Ryzen 7000 series laptops were apparently suffering from radio frequency interference issues with Wi-Fi and GPU memory clocks. And Linux kernel 6.8 includes AMD R5 mitigations, which should resolve this issue. Overall, my experience with Fedora 40 has been great. In terms of feel and stability, I haven't been able to identify any serious issues. Performance has been great. Hardware worked flawlessly out of the box. You will definitely not feel a groundbreaking change in terms of user experience if you update from 39 to 40. But there are small changes everywhere aimed to provide a more polished experience and make your life a little bit easier, which is nice to have. With this, I'll wrap today's video. If you enjoy the content, don't forget to subscribe to get notified when I release another video. Take care.